So we're going to look at in this video what happens when there are errors in the cell cycle's control mechanisms, um, which really leads to if the cell cycle is malfunctioning, you're going to have uncontrolled cell growth. So when we look at the genes that normally regulate cell growth and division during the cell cycle, these include genes for growth factors, their receptors. So if you're thinking about like a growth factor a coming and attaching to a receptor tyrosine kinase, it would be the genes that code for that tyrosine kinase. Because remember, receptors are proteins, and proteins are coded for by genes. And it could also be um, errors in the intracellular molecules of the signaling pathways. So when you think about tyrosine kinases, it could be the um, like relay proteins or something. So if we see here, you can see how um, it could be the growth factors, it could be the receptor, or it could be the protein that stimulates or causes the cell to divide. So when we look at um, this, we can see that mutations um, that alter any of these genes in somatic cells are what can lead to cancer. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So here we have normal versions of um, genes that are part of normal cell division and cell growth. So here we're looking at genes that are involved in cells dividing, whether they're genes coding for growth factors, genes coding for receptors, or genes coding for um, molecules within the cell, like cyclin-dependent kinases or relay proteins. Uh, these genes are called proto-oncogenes. So proto-oncogenes are regular normal genes that code for proteins involved in cell division. So you have transcription factors that will turn on gene expression for these proto-oncogenes. They will be transcribed and translated, and this protein product that's made are going to be proteins that are involved in regulating the cell cycle, whether it be fa growth factors, receptors, etc. So proto-oncogenes are normal genes that are responsible for producing proteins that control different steps of the cell cycle. All right, so when we look at this, though, sometimes there can be damage to these genes. So you have cancer-causing agents, whether they're environmental factors like UV light or certain chemicals you're exposed to or radiation. Um, but somehow this proto-oncogene um, is changed. It's mutated. And so here you have a proto-oncogene that becomes an oncogene. So an oncogene is a cancer-causing gene. Now, when we think about what cancer is, cancer is going to be uncontrolled cell growth, where this growth of cells interferes with the normal functioning of the body. So here, this proto-oncogene, now turned oncogene, when it is expressed, um, a couple things could be happening. It could be because maybe there's an overproduction of the protein involved in the cell cycle. So now maybe it's a lot of growth factor or a lot of receptors. So now there's a lot more signals coming in. Maybe it's a um, like a more active relay protein that pushes the cell through the cell cycle more often. And so when we look at this, in general, oncogenes arise from a genetic change that leads to an increase in either the amount of the proto-oncogenes protein product, so you have more of it, or the intrinsic activity. We'll see later in the RAS protein, it's just hyperactive. It's being more active than it should be pushing the cell through that cell cycle. So here, when we look at, um, sorry, I don't know how to make this box smaller, but when we look at proto-oncogenes, they code for RNA, that codes for a protein and normal cell division. However, in an oncogene, something changes or mutates that um, proto-oncogene to be an oncogene, and now you have a mutant protein leading to like tons of cell proliferation and cell growth. So here you can see how a um, cancer-causing agents can convert proto-oncogenes to oncogenes, and that can lead to um, overgrowth of cells. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch screens to just be um, normal like this, hopefully. Oh, wrong one. 
two. Okay, so now here, when we look at um, how might a proto-oncogene um, that has normal like function in how cells work become an oncogene? So when we look at this, here you have um, the genetic changes that are going to um, convert proto-oncogenes to oncogenes fall into three main categories. So the first one is the movement of DNA within the genome. So you can see in this picture here how like a section of DNA moved and now you have a new promoter. So now it's possible that there's um, that protein that is involved in the cell cycle is being overproduced. So maybe you have too much of a particular protein because of like a new promoter region or something. You could have amplification of that proto-oncogene. So this could happen during um, like a chromosomal duplication where it's a type of mutation where you have a section of a gene that's duplicated or copied. So instead of having one copy of this gene, you now have like three copies. So when each of these uh, genes are being transcribed and translated, you would have lots of that protein now made in excess. Or it could be due to a point mutation in the control element um, or the proto-oncogene itself. So you could have where the control element now has a mutation or the gene itself, the proto-oncogene has a mutation um, that leads to either like a hyperactive protein product or maybe it resists degradation so it lasts longer within the cell. Um, but anyway, these are three ways that a proto-oncogene can become an oncogene. Okay, and so now what could cause these? Well, you have mutations um, can be triggered by UV radiation, chemical exposure, heat, cigarette smoke, pollution, age, or genetics. So when we look at genetics, genetics is actually only responsible for about 10 to 15 percent of cancers. Um, and a common studied one is the breast cancer. So when we look at um, breast cancer, there are some genes, the BRCA gene, and you have two different ones, you have gene one and gene two on different chromosomes. And basically these genes are used to like um, repair certain proteins. So if you have a mutation in these genes, well, if like proteins in the cell cycle are not getting repaired, well, therefore you're gonna have abnormal cells multiplying. So we'll talk more about um, what happens at the genetic level in our genetics unit. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this. So since there are genes that promote cell division, do you think there are genes that inhibit or prevent cell division? Of course, right? So earlier we were talking about proto-oncogenes, genes that are going to promote the cell to divide. Well, now we're gonna look at genes that stop cell division and help to regulate it that way. So here, there are genes whose normal protein product stops the cells from dividing. It inhibits cell division. So when we look at this, what we have, we call these things tumor suppressor genes. So tumor suppressor genes, um, their gene and the protein that they code for help to prevent uncontrolled cell growth. So when we look at this here, you can see a tumor suppressor gene that works, works or is you know expressed normally you would have the protein product that's made kind of helps to control whether or not the cell cycle should happen, should that cell go from G1 into S phase, and it helps kind of prevent uncontrolled cell growth. However, if you have a mutation or somehow it's defective in that region of that tumor suppressor gene, well, now that protein product is defective or non-functioning, now you are missing that protein that helps to stop the cell cycle and therefore the cell cycle will multiply, the cells will divide. They'll go from G1 into S phase and go through the cell cycle. So tumor suppressor genes, how do they work, right? So they can, um, that protein may repair some DNA damage. So if in G1, the cell notices that there's damage to the DNA, um, this protein can stop the cell cycle and allow time for DNA to be repaired and fixed, and then the cells will divide into S phase. It could also, um, sorry, 
Uh, some are components of cell signaling pathways that inhibit the cell cycle, um, maybe blocking the relay protein. And then you have some parts that are um, like control the adhesion of cells attaching to other cells or to the extracellular matrix. So this goes into like ink like density dependent inhibition, helping the cell to know, okay, I'm touching another cell, we shouldn't divide. So with this here, if you have a normal chromosomes, your uh, tumor suppressor genes are correct, good copies, you would have normal cell growth. However, if you have um, maybe one mutation, because remember, you get two copies. You have a copy from your mom and you have a copy from your dad. So you have two of each type of gene. So here, if you have a mutated version of one, well, you still have a working copy on one of your chromosomes, so you'd still have normal cell growth. However, if you inherit or you have maybe a mutation happens and now both copies of your tumor suppressor gene are not working, uh, now let's think about it. It's a tumor suppressor gene, so it's going to stop or inhibit the cell cycle, so now that could lead to uncontrolled cell growth. Okay. So here's what uncontrolled cell growth would look like. So let's go ahead and um, look at this real fast as like a summary. So here we have interference of normal cell signaling pathways. You have your proto-oncogenes that become oncogenes, and we have our tumor suppressor genes. So in a proto-oncogene, a common example is the RAS uh, protein. So um, in tumor suppressor genes, P53 is a common studied tumor suppressor gene. In um, mutations in the RAS um, gene, that occurs in about 30% of human cancers in the RAS protein. Um, and in the tumor suppressor gene, P53, that's going to occur in about 50% of human cancers. So these are two critically important um, proteins involved in preventing uh, abnormal cell division. So let's go ahead and spend some time and look at the RAS protein and um, how this could go from a proto-oncogene to an oncogene. So here's a normal uh, pathway. What we see here is you have in step one, the growth factor attaches to a tyrosine kinase, and that's going to activate the kinases, lead to a signal transaction pathway uh, that then the final cell response is to make a protein that stimulates the cell cycle. That green triangle down there at the bottom says, hey, let's have the cell cycle work. Now, the RAS protein is uh, a G protein you see up there at the top. And so what happens is a mutation could happen where now um, that RAS protein is active and here we're going to get lots of, um, of that green triangle protein that stimulates the cell cycle. So here, um, when we look at this, here we can see a, I'm so sorry, see the normal pathway that happens. You have the growth factor attaches, leads to a signal transduction pathway, and a cell response. However, a mutation earlier when we talked about how the intrinsic nature of the protein could change or mutate, here we see how that RAS mutation, it's hyperactive, and it continually sends a message down the phosphorylation cascade leading to overproduction of that protein. And that protein could be cyclin-dependent kinases. It could be um, just excess proteins in the cell leading to more um, cell growth, and even in the absence of a growth factor. So there's no signal. It's just going without it. And now let's go ahead and look at um, tumor suppressor genes. So the main tumor suppressor gene that we'll talk about is P53. So in P53, there could be lots of stresses coming into the cell. Um, and so with that, um, here, the P53 is going to stop the cell cycle to try and fix things. So whether it's DNA repair or um, program cell death, P53 is going to be responsible for helping only good, healthy cells go from G1 into S phase. So if you have, um, like, you DNA damage that's going to activate a protein kinases will activate a, um, a P53 is going to act as a transcription factor to turn on gene expression to make proteins that stop the cell cycle. So here, P53 prevents the cell cycle from happening. 
However, when you don't have P50, 